Hey there. <clears throat> hey there. So, welcome back to another video. So, as you can see from the title of the video and all those things, we are doing a video today inspired. No, we're doing a video today about the history of Pride Month. This is a more westernized version. I'm not going to talk about South African Pride or anything like that in this video. I'll keep that for when South Africa celebrates Pride, which I'm pretty sure is October. So yeah, just so you know, in October, we're gonna do another round of, oh, but October is Halloween. Okay, wait, I don't know, I'll figure it out, but we might do another round of like Pride Month videos in October. So I don't know, we'll, we'll <laughs> That's like how many months away from now, so we'll see, but yeah. We'll talk about that in this video, we'll talk about the history, and we'll talk about why we celebrate Pride Month, and why we should celebrate Pride Month, in case you don't. Then, the look we're gonna do today is inspired by the progressive or inclusive Pride flag, which I'll put here. Thank you so much for all the support, and all of the interest given to Pride Month. I am really appreciating the fact that I'm able to introduce people to Proud Month and teach them about Proud Month and things like that. So yeah, with that being said, let's get right into the video. So just a quick disclaimer, if you have watched my History of Drag video, you probably have heard most of this. And obviously, if you know about gay rights and things like that, then you have heard of it as well. But I'm just saying, if you have watched my History and Drag video, lots of the things that I'm going to say in this video were in that video. So yeah, just be prepared for some repetitiveness. But anyways, so in 1969, the mafia operated Stonewall Inn was considered one of the most popular gay bars in Greenwich Village. Village. Around that time, being gay was illegal in every state except Illinois. Now, again, this is a very American history of Pride Month, and obviously it's about the Stonewall riots and things like that. So it was illegal to serve alcohol to gay people as well in New York, and as a result of that, many gay establishments operated without a proper liquor license, which made it very easy for police to regularly raid gay bars and other places that were considered safe havens to people of the LGBTQIA plus community. So back in the 60s, there were many laws on the books that criminalized the simple act of existing if you're a person who was LGBT, and that manifested itself as over-policing of the community. Oftentimes, law enforcement would come into LGBT bars, arrest the patrons for just being, and harass people. In the early hours on Saturday, June 28, 1969, nine New York City policemen in plain clothes raided the Stonewall Inn. Officers justified the raid with a search warrant, authorizing the police to investigate the illegal sale of alcohol at the bar. It was the third raid on Greenwich Village gay bars in a short period. During the raid, police interrogated and arrested Stonewall employees for selling alcohol without a license, and police also arrested several crossdressers and at least two drag queens. In 1969, it was illegal to wear fewer than three items of gender-inappropriate clothing in New York, and it was informally known as the three-article rule or three-piece law. So if you're a man, you aren't allowed to wear more than three female pieces of clothing so just to put that into perspective if you wore more than three you would be arrested okay so just for clarification the difference between a drag queen and a cross dresser a drag queen is someone who performs someone who dresses in hyper gender to perform and a cross dresser is someone who occasionally wears clothes for the opposite gender and this is a form of gender expression and it's not for entertainment purposes so just so we're clear on that the stonewall turning point was when police tried to put a lesbian in a patrol car and officers were forcing this woman into the vehicle after she tried to walk away three times and in response about 400 people outside the car chanted police brutality and tossed objects such as coins and bottles at the police which good fucking 
Get them. Anyways, during the unexpected riot, the police requested reinforcements and barricaded themselves inside the bar for safety. According to the editors of Encyclopedia Britannica, the police barricade was repeatedly breached and someone set the bar on fire. Once additional police arrived at the scene, the fire was extinguished. It turned into a whole protest movement and all sorts of marginalized groups were fighting for their rights rights to be recognized, and fighting to repeal these laws that were on the books that served to just keep people on the margins. Around 4am the next day, the crowd at Stonewall dispersed, but by the evening, thousands of people showed up at the bar and in surrounding areas to fight for LGBT rights. The protests continued into the next week, with law enforcement violently clashing with protesters. Over the next several days, LGBT supporters pushed the gay rights movement. And just so we're clear, no one died at Stonewall. No one was killed. Um, I don't know if anybody listening to this doesn't know that. No one was killed at Stonewall. Um, I'll put up the video of Derek Berry saying that people were killed, but anyways. <laughs> like when people don't know what Stonewall is. You know what I mean? Well, won't, you tell, like, won't you tell everybody what that is? That was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were, was killed at Stonewall. Nobody was nobody killed? Nobody was killed at Stonewall. <laughs> Okay, so on the one year anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, gay rights activists organized the first Christopher Street Liberation March and Gay Pride Week in New York City to recognize the impact LGBT people had on history, locally, nationally, and internationally. The police were infringing on their rights, arresting them and beating them. They started the marches in New York to celebrate the fact that they stood up for themselves. Pride is a celebration of all the things the LGBT community never had. If we don't learn from the past, then we are going to repeat it. Gay Pride Day grew over time to a month-long celebration, including pride parades, picnics, parties, workshops, concerts, and more nationally and internationally. Memorials are also held during Pride Month to remember members of the LGBTQIA communities who died due to hate crimes or HIV AIDS. Very quickly, the gay liberation movement had a global impact, not only in Europe, but in other parts of the world as well. There, queer activists decided they also needed to organize amongst themselves. And so, you also see gay pride marches elsewhere. Taiwan is the first state in Asia and the most populous continent in the world to legalize same-sex marriage. Taiwan was also the first country to have a pride march in a Chinese-speaking world. Pride is really about creating a better world for future generations. It's a celebration of how far we've come, but there's still more work to be done. As long as we are having celebrations, we should make sure that we are still talking about the struggle. Remember, the work isn't done. For black people, indigenous people, of color, who are LGBT, and transgender people, there are still assaults happening. There's also still greater movement for the LGBTQIA people to have equal recognition under the law and equal access to the same opportunity Ooh, the same opportunities as everyone else. Just like a quick thing that I want to add is we celebrate Pride Month because we think about what happened, you know, whether it be American Pride, whether it be European Pride, whatever. We think about Pride Month and we think about what happened and how far we've come. That's why it's important. But it's also important because there are 69 countries that have laws that criminalize homosexuality and nearly half of these are in Africa. However, in some countries, there have been moves to decriminalize same-sex unions. In February this year, Angola's president signed into law a revised penal code to allow same-sex relationships and ban discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. In June of last year, Gabon reversed a law that had criminalized homosexuality and made gay sex punishable with six months in prison and a large fine. Botswana's High Court also ruled in favor of decriminalizing homosexuality in 2019. Mozambique and the Seychelles have also scrapped anti-homosexuality laws in recent years. In Trinidad and Tobago, a court in 2018 ruled that laws banning gay sex were unconstitutional, but there are countries where existing laws outlawing homosexuality have been tightened, including Nigeria and Uganda. And in others, efforts to get these laws removed have failed. A court in Singapore dismissed a bid to overturn a law that prohibits gay sex early last year. And in May of 2019, 
the High Court in Kenya upheld laws criminalizing homosexual acts. Many of these laws criminalizing homosexual relations originate from colonial times, and in many other places, breaking these laws could be punishable by long prison sentences. Out of the 53 countries in the Commonwealth, 36 have laws that criminalize homosexuality. The International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Association monitors the progress of laws relating to homosexuality around the world, and it says that the death penalty is legally prescribed punishment for same-sex acts in Brunei, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Yemen and in other northern states in Nigeria. Sudan repealed the death penalty for consensual same-sex sexual acts last year, and some observers note that the risk of persecution execution in some places is minimal. So as you can see, it's important to celebrate pride because we have places around the world where people are still unable to be who they are without being punished severely and unnecessarily. So just think about that when or if you have the opinion of like why do we celebrate Pride Month? This is why we celebrate Pride Month. We celebrate Pride Month because so many people before us couldn't. We celebrate because it means we're able to live authentically. We celebrate because there are people around the world who still can't celebrate. You know, we think about those before and we often think about the past and how in the past people couldn't be themselves without being um, arrested or killed but it's still happening today and that's why it's important. Now whether or not we celebrate Pride Month in June or whether we celebrate it in October like some South Africans seem to think we have to, it doesn't matter, we need to celebrate it anyways and even if we don't just celebrate it in June, let's celebrate it all year round, let's raise awareness all year round, we don't need to keep our activism and our awareness to just one month. We need to celebrate and we need to bring awareness to the queer struggle all year round. And that's just my opinion. Okay, so as you can see, I am done. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not like super in love with it. So I'm a little bit irritated with that, but it's fine. I mean, it's very, very, very reminiscent of my first Pride look. Even though this is different, it just looks similar. But as you can see, we have the white, pink, and blue from the transgender part of the progressive flag. And then we have black and brown for POC pride. So hopefully, I feel like this is very reminiscent of the actual flag. And I still like it. I mean, period. That is it for this video, everyone. I hope this video was informative enough. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please like this video. Please go subscribe to my channel and if you want to, you can leave a little comment down below. I hope you have a great morning or evening or night and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.